Hi everyone, I hope you are doing really great and we are getting close to um, day uh, one, two, three of the CPA exam. And in this video, I want to explain how to get a C in financial reporting in CPA exam. Financial reporting is one of the sections that you have to try um, and do your best to get a um, couple of C and minimum RC uh, in the FR topics. And this is one of the uh, most challenging parts uh, for the uh, CPA candidates. So let's see how we can get C in the CPA exam in financial reporting section. Okay. In this part, you need to have a template for all the FRAOs. Um, something which is really good is that the template for the FRAOs are the same for day two and day three. So if you know the template very well and then repeat them, it's going to be um, part of the job and task done. So. The first part of it is issue, and then you have to talk about the criteria, and then analysis, and then recommendation, or some people call it conclusion, but it's going to be the same um, meaning, uh, and then impact. That I will explain about this part too. Let's see the issue. Well, the issue is written in the um, um, in the case. Uh, in most cases, it's really obvious, it's really clear, but sometimes it's kind of tricky and hidden and you have to understand what the issue is. And you have to elaborate the issue and show the marker that you recognized it properly. Do not write it, um, okay, just recognizing uh, if this item should be expensed or capitalized. Elaborate it more and try to show the marker that you understand the issue, you understand the um, case and what the case is asking you. The second part is the criteria. For this part, you have two choices. One of them is using the handbook, which um, is my preference and the other one is your memory. Um, I don't recommend relying on your memory 100%. You have to know the criteria by heart but because of the exam environment you do not uh, rely fully on your memory. So it's going to be better to know the criteria to understand it very well, but at the same time, uh, being more familiar with the handbook, different sections of the handbook and copy and paste uh, the right paragraphs, right criteria from the handbook. And uh, then we'll go to the next part which is analysis in the analysis you have to tie the criteria to the case facts case facts is very very important it can be the name of people in the case it can be the name of the factory it can be some specific data that's coming from that specific case and case by case these are very different and remember cpa markers the cv markers they love the case facts because if you do not use the case facts if you do not tie the criteria to the case facts in your analysis they see that okay this candidate memorized this criteria and this analysis, but when you use the case facts in your analysis, they understand that, okay, this analysis is only and specifically for this case, and it cannot be used like this for the other case. So try to be more friend with the case facts, find them and use them and show the marker you understand the case, you understand the issue, 
you can analyze it properly and deeply. And the next part is recommendation or conclusion. Always wrap up your analysis. Always close whatever you are working on and do not leave it like this and say, oh, okay, it's like this and don't need to close it. Always close your discussion properly, have a conclusion, have a decision based on your analysis. At the very end, your conclusion can be wrong, but it should be based on your analysis. And that's very important that you conclude based on your analysis properly. And then the last part is the impact. It can be impact on the um, FS or it can be impact on debt covenant, depending on the case and the case facts and the case uh, issue but remember if you are looking to get CD competent with distinction go for impact but if you are focusing to get C you don't need to uh, analyze and add this part this is only for CD so I never used um, this impact section in my analysis in day two and day three and I passed it and it's okay and I guarantee that impact is only for getting CD so just focus on C you don't need CD there is no difference you only need C and RC better to get more C to be on the safe side but um, if you get CD I think that you just wasted your time and sacrificed your time um, for that could be used for the other um, AOs uh, analysis properly. So um, I don't recommend writing the impact. It's up to you, but I don't recommend it. In this slide, I want to explain the importance of the journal entry and required adjustments because the financial reporting section mostly has some adjustments, some journal entry that you have to show it. Um, I've seen many candidates that they are asking, okay, we have to write these journal entries in the Word document or Excel document. Um, it wasn't my question. I knew that I have to do it in Excel um, and it's better to do it in Excel because it's going to be more organized, more clear and make the uh, CV markers life easy because they don't spend that much time to mark your case. So make their life easy and keep them happy with more organized um, data and um, your uh, analysis and they will find the data very faster your analysis uh, and it's going to be really easier for them to give you the mark think about it like this you as a marker you want to see something that's really clean very organized and um, easily um, find whatever that should be found and uh, in this case it's going to be really easier for yourself and you're going to be more confident at the end of the exam that okay i wrote this properly and more organized and it's going to be um, really um, better overall and always do the journal entry in the excel not the word document keep it simple in the um, excel document and if you want to get c uh, and the AO needs a journal entry and adjustment, you should do it. Don't think about it, just do it. In this slide, it's written that day two and day three. Um, in both days, there is gonna be FR issues for sure. But there is differences um, at the same time. So in day two, there's going to be more analysis according to the time allocated for um, 
each FRAO, we have talked about the time allocation for the day two and day three also. In day two, you have to allocate between um, 15 to 18, uh, maximum 20 minutes, 22 minutes maximum um, for each uh, AO, especially FRAOs. And um, in day three, there's going to be less analysis according to the time allocated. It's going to be um, eight to 10 minutes, maximum 12 minutes allocated to each AO in day three. So you can easily understand that the depth that you can do in your analysis in day two is really more than day three uh, AOs. So what you should do in day two is going to be more analysis, more work. You have to spend more time. You have to be more familiar with the uh, FR topics and get C from a couple of FR AOs in day two. And it's going to be uh, less analysis in day three. But again, you have to do analysis in order to get um, C and RC in FR topics in day three as well. And in this slide, I noted a couple of items and reasons that candidates won't get C in the FR topics. So they read the issue so fast and miss the important data. It happens for candidates that they are in rush and they cannot stay focused and read the case properly. Understanding the AO, understanding the issue and case is half of the way, is 50% of your analysis. If you do not understand it properly, so you cannot analyze um, the um, issue properly also. And spend time but try to be fast but do not sacrifice the um, quality um, when you are reading the case stay focused try to uh, concentrate and uh, read the issue properly get the point the other point is they don't know the criteria they don't know the proper uh, criteria that should be used or the FR section, they are not that much confident uh, about the FR topics. The other point is that they do not know how to use the handbook. If you are planning to um, copy and paste the criteria from handbook, you have to start uh, being more familiar with the handbook, different sections, different paragraphs, and visually try to memorize different sections, I mean their locations, where they are located in the handbook. And in this case, you are going to be more confident because the exam environment is going to be stressful and you need more energy to stay focused and be more confident uh, when you want to use the um, handbook. You have to use the proper uh, paragraphs and sections. And the other point, they forget about the case facts and do not use them in analysis. As I said, case facts is the point that CV markers love it. So find the case facts and use them in your analysis. In this way, definitely you will get the point. There is no conclusion for analysis. When you do not close your discussion and when you do not say, okay, at the very end or as a result, or there is no wrap up, it seems that it's, it's like this, that you are uh, talking to your friend about some a strategy, but at the very end, there is no conclusion, there is no end for your conversation or your analysis. So 
it's not professional. You have to close it and you have to conclude that, okay, what's the end point? And the other one is they forget to do the journal entry and required adjustment. As I explained, the FR topics mostly need the journal entries and some adjustments and try to do it in the Excel, not in the Word document and show the marker that you understand the case, you use the case facts, you are confident, you are uh, closing your analysis and conversation, and you are professional. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you have any question, leave a comment below in the uh, comment sections. And I appreciate if you like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already. Again, thanks for watching and see you in the next videos.